we've been looking at the power of unity for multiplied impact. Multiplied impact. We want to make impact. Everybody in their department, you, you need to see the efforts that the choir put in, instrumentalists. You see, Bro Sammy will say, no, that didn't work. That didn't go the way I want it. That is not like that. You need to see those. A lot of things go behind the scene, effort behind the scene to make it work. Many a time, Bro Joel was awake all night just to make sure things worked. Oh, yeah, we're using this platform. We're using that software and all that. And so many of the choir people, too, Practicing at night, man, I need, to ma I need to master that part that I am taking, you know. It's very important. In order for something to work, effort has to be put into it. And in order for us to make lasting impact, not just to make impact, but lasting impact, we need to, um, we need to come together. We need to be united. And one of the major core of unity is purpose. Purpose. When purpose is not there, there is nothing to be united to do. Because unity has to, uh, there must be something to do when it is, when unity is called upon. Are we together now? There is something to do. When man was created, the Bible said it is not good that man should be alone. So something, there is a duty. And so he created the woman, and the woman came to the scene, and he now said, okay, now you need to join together to do the assignment I've given to this man to do. You know, and uh, many people have misinterpreted that part. To say that women don't have their own vision. They don't have their own assignment. They don't have their own aspiration. They don't have their own desire to achieve something in life. So many women too have bought that lie from the devil. The day they got married, that is the day they died. The day they got married, that is the day their vision disappeared. Oh, what are you doing now, ma? Oh, well, I'm just with my husband. We're just, I'm just, I'm just at home. I'm just at home. I'm just there. But you know that will not even work here. And anybody that chooses to do that here will find his way back to where he came from. It is not a prayer. It is, an, it is a reality on ground that you have to work. You have to work. Sometimes full-time housewife is full-time punishment. It's full-time uh, taking advantage of you. Look at Tony Say, don't settle for less. There is something higher because we have seen that when God gave instruction to the man, God also gave instruction to the woman. Male and female created them. So the distinction was there. The uniqueness was there. But they have to come together now in order to fulfill that purpose. Are we together now? now so, but we need to understand also that um, there is no BBN in the church. As a church family, as a church workplace, there is nothing like big brother. There's nothing like, wow, these ones are more, more than the others. No. In the work of God, in the kingdom of God, we move together. We have one purpose and we achieve that purpose that God has given to the general of Asia. And then we are like, okay, this is your own area of strength. So you are taking it from that area. It's like we are carrying the same load from different angles. Are we together now? Praise the Lord somebody. So no Jesus last born seed syndrome. We are all equal before God because of the blood of Jesus. After that, I think from since last week we've been looking at how to promote unity. How do we do what? Promote unity. How to promote unity. We looked at love. We said in order to promote unity, we need to demonstrate love. We need love. To promote unity, love gives, love forgives, love makes you selfless, love puts others before you, love esteems others greater than you, love creates allowances for the errors of others, love makes an excuse for the errors of others, love does all these things. And we looked at, uh, I think, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. It says, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's fault because of your love. 
You see, because of the love we have now, we make allowances for each other's faults. Why? Because we have a purpose to pursue. We have a job to do. God, you know, many people believe that when you become a Christian, all the job is done by Jesus and that's all. No. The Bible says we should work out. There is always work to do in the farm. He <laughs> said we work out your salvation with fear and trembling. We keep working and this work continues. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. We also look at patience. We say patience is very important. Stop trying to make sense out of every nonsense. If you really want unity and if you want peace, you have to be patient. We have to be patient. I have to be patient. There has to be a demonstration of patience. Praise the Lord, somebody. I said don't clamor around things that don't matter. Don't clamor around things that don't matter. There's no need for them. Don't major on the minor. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. There are so many lies of the devil. Remember I said that one of the, 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 the first conversation between Satan and man was about God and the instruction God gave concerning unity. He wanted to break that bond of oneness. A man shall leave his father and mother and many men want their wife to leave their family. It is a man that will leave his father and mother and cleave to the wife. The cleave to the wife and then both of them now are you seeing what I'm talking about here now? This is very, very important because when you read the Bible from face value, you miss the nitty-gritties. You meet, miss the in-betweens. A man will have to leave. A woman is there with the family, but the man will have to leave his own. Come and join this woman. The, is the mother cleave? Are, we, are you... Are, oh, God. Are you getting what I'm talking about now? You cleave to the wife and then both comes in. One leaves, he is the one that leaves first, he is the one that goes to cleave, and then he becomes both. And that boat now becomes one. And immediately Satan had both. One. He was, he was mad. He didn't want that because he know that a connection between those two will bruise his head. They will produce a seed that will bruise the head. And he said, no, 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 I know where this is going. I know my, my part in this old drama. I'm not going to allow this. And he sent the snake. Entered the snake and the snake began to manipulate. And the first thing that the snake went for was the oneness. Immediately got the oneness. The next thing he went for was their seed. He made sure one of the, the seed killed the other one. Cain and Abel. So that was where trouble started. When oneness is broken, trouble opens up. Trouble begins. So there's need for us to be what? Patient. Patient with one another in order for us to win. Number three, we talked about humility. Humility. Don't lord it over others. Be lowly. Meekness is magnet to greatness. Meekness is what? Magnet to greatness. If you are meek, oh my God. The Bible says you will inherit the earth. You will inherit things. There is an inheritance for the meek. There is no inheritance for the proud. Is the truth. Accommodate people. We are hearing a testimony from our brother last week. How much the Lord has helped him to be able to accommodate people. That the stuff that he takes today or oh, before, he will not even tolerate it. And I think that, that goes a long way also to talk about his new association, his new circle of influence. Because there's a lot that comes into play in actually reorienting somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Are we together now? It is not stupidity to be humble. It is not foolishness to be humble. Yes, some, it may appear as if people are taking you for granted, but that's not true. Because there is greatness for the humble. There is greatness for those who are humble. The humility. He said before honor, there is humility. You know, that's what we talk about before we entered unity. We're dealing with pride. And then we now move now into, into uh, uh, unity. Very, very important. Number four. Live responsibly. This is very important. Live responsibly. Live responsibly. Remember I said that uh, when I was talking about love, 
I said that love, love covered a multitude of sin. I also said that the Bible said we should do what? We should love in such a way, in such a way that we are able to accommodate other people. Accommodate other people. Now, living responsibly. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 to 16. Ephesians chapter 4, 15 to 16. It reads, and I quote from here. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. From verse 14 now. From him, the whole body jointly and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. As each part does its work. Very, very important. I want to say here, talking about living responsibly, for us to be united, sir, ma, there, is, there needs to be responsible living. I will break this down. I will break this down. Don't expect what you have not given. Don't expect what you have not given. Nobody visited me, but how many people have you visited? This, that church, they don't used to give. How many people have you given? This is our youth department. We don't even know how to, to call one another. How many people have you called? Before you point a finger, make sure that you, that you are coming to, either must come to equity, must do what? I think that's the way they put that word. <laughs> so you must come with clear hands. You must make sure, he said, he that, you say, who shall ascend to the hills of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He that has what? Clean hands and a pure heart. He that have not sown, uh, given himself to vanity or sown deceitfully, then he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. So this is important. Who really have you helped? Now you are asking for somebody to help you. Who have you helped? In life, it is those that raise other people that are also lifted up when their time comes. Listen, there is nothing that is left to chance. I'm telling you. The day that this, my brother here, did his graduation, I was here in the, in the church here. We were using the youth hall right there. And then I, I, I saw so many people. And all of them were saying the same thing. The dad was sitting, the mom was sitting. Everybody was saying dif different kind of things. How much he was there for them when they were in their own situation. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Many people just think that magic happened. Oh man, look at the crowd. This person is pulling. Listen to me. Everybody, anybody that comes your way, God has given you opportunity to make impact in their life. And listen, it is for, look, any impact you make in the life of somebody, you are bank it. You know how you bank uh, days in the office? You bank it. A day will come, you will need it, and that day you will pull it out. You pull it out. So when I stand, and my father in the law was doing 70th birthday, and then the, the whole world was on the standstill just for one man. I said, that man has imparted lives. That man has imparted lives. While some people were busy blocking people, he was busy accepting those ones that they were blocking. Where some people never wanted to listen to young, small, small boys like us when we were small, he was able to admit us into class and train us and see where we are today. Why are we not going to pay first fruit to that ministry? He said they already have money. Why must you people be giving first fruit to them? Is it your money? There is a covenant that we are, pro that we are operating. There is a covenant that we are operating and that covenant doesn't lie. That covenant doesn't fail. Praise the Lord somebody. I always see people condemn others. Why? They are just deceiving you. They are using your head. They are using you. You are giving your money to pastor. You are giving your money to pastor. What pastor have done, many parents have not done for their children. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. What pastors have done night and day, standing for some people in their marriage, in their home, in their life, whether they are tired, worn out, they still get up, they still go. Many best friends cannot do it. Many family members cannot do it. I'm telling you the truth. The sacrifices that some people have put into some people they never knew from Adam. Others, can, others who knew them can't do it. And today, they are giving, they are supporting, they are helping the ministry of the and you are complaining. 
you have you never start, you will complain, no. Oh, I'm telling you, because some people they are not ready to listen to you. Because they understand the connection they have. There was a day I was teaching here, and then grandma said, Ha, today. And I was teaching good. I was teaching powerfully the truth. And grandma said, Ha, one of the statements I made, I say, Your pastor is not your friend. And, and, and then when she came, she said, Ah, today I've lost a friend. <laughs> to her, I am more than that. I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about this morning. To her, this is my pastor, I understand, but I am more than that. You need to understand the place of people in your life. If you like, condemn them. Other, why other people are saying, who are you? Other people are saying, thank God for you. So don't look at those who are saying, who are you? Just concentrate on those whom God is using you to bless. Because those who are saying, who are you there? They are some of the people you died for. Are you not surprised that on the day Jesus, Pilate, Pilate called. He said, in his mind, the wife has already sent him a message. Look, don't have anything to do with the problem of that man. No. He said, okay. And Pilate was doing everything to let that let Jesus free. He brought him, he brought an arm robber, hardened arm robber. He knew that this is where I get them. I got them today. They will never choose arm robber over this man. This man that healed them, this man that was there in the night, in the day, this man that was in the wilderness with them, this man that multiplied five loaves of bread and, and fish. Ah, no. Come on. This man who raised their dead, this man who stood for them. This, uh, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. Even the partners of Peter enjoyed the fish that, no, 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 no. I, I got them where I want them. Pilate was so excited. He was a Greek man, a Grecian. So he was so excited. And then he stood. He said, I bring before you Barnabas. And I bring before you Jesus, who also doubles as the king of the Jews. And then they said, no, 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 no. Away with that man. Give us Barnabas. We want Barabbas. Don't give up Jesus. Give ah. That was where it happened. That was where it happened. If you think, later I will talk about something. If you think that people will stand by you because of what you have done for them, you joke, you lie. Whatever you are doing, do it as unto the Lord and not for man. And that's how God will generate men to support you. Don't seek for value when you have not given value. If you go slow, people will place you high. I say if you go low, people will place you what? They place you high. Don't be a role player. Be a role model. Don't be a role statue. <laughs> be a model. Be somebody who belongs. Be somebody who is a part of it. Wash other people's needs. Wash their feet and see whether your own will be dirty. It will not. Don't seek recognition, but make others feel recognized. And you, your own recognition will be globalized. Number five. How do I promote unity in this home, in this church, in this family, in this relationship? Prayer. We cannot remove prayer. We can't remove prayer. It's very, very important because the prayer is important because the devil hates unity. Basic. That's the truth. He hates unity, so prayer becomes very, very important. Those who pray together will live together. And I have observed that people who pray together hardly fight themselves. I don't know whether you get what I just said. People who pray together, they hardly fight themselves. They hardly fight themselves. Oh, yes. <laughs> Prayer has a way of melting hearts. It's true. It will, it will melt the hearts. If you don't pray, you may just become the prey. People who pray together stays together. A praying church is a united church. It's true. It's a united church. When we pray together, we win together. Anybody you cannot pray with, you cannot be together. You cannot be united with. It's the truth. Anybody you cannot pray with. Check it. Those who you are angry with, you never pray for. It's the truth. 
Those who you are carrying malice and enmity with, you never pray with. Pray for. The day you begin to pray for that person, your heart opens up and the Holy, because the, the love of Christ is shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. It will work. It begins to move inside of you. Number six. So I round up number six. The word. The word. The word of God. Oh my goodness. Those who hear the same things grow the same way. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why some people are complaining. You don't hear the same thing. Now look at all of us here now. Look at everybody here now, including the children. They are all hearing the same word from the same pastor. The same word from the same pastor. Another person will be somewhere now hearing another person. Are you getting what I'm saying? Maybe the husband is here, wife is there, or maybe children is here, the other one is there, and they are hearing different, different, and when they come together, there is no synergy. There is no caution. There is no agreement. There is no unity. And they are wondering, what is, mommy, no, 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 I don't agree with that. Ah. And then you open the plate for them, they be like, oh, it's true. How come my father was saying that? How come that person was saying that? How come that other one was saying that? If you were there also, you would have also understood the perspective that one was coming from. So those who hear the same thing grow the same way. They grow together. They grow together. You know, I've always humorously say that United States has become divided states. And it is not only in the physical United States of America, even in our family, even in our churches, even in our places of worship, when we are supposed to be united on the same stake, we are divided. May what's supposed to unite us not divide us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The more you want to be, to be united, the more the devil will fight that unity. John chapter 17, verse 11. The, one of the greatest prayers Jesus ever prayed. Openly, he prayed this one. I've told you before. John 17, verse 11. He said, and now, I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep true thy own name, those whom you have given me, that they be one as we are one. Unity. Unity. The prayer of Jesus. Lord, I'm coming to you. Please, one thing that will keep these people here is unity. It's unity. Unity. In verse 21 of that same place, verse 21, he said that they all be one. As thou, Father, are in me, and I in thee, that they also be one in us, that the word may believe that thou hast sent me. One, one, in, us, we, me, we, we, in, us, in, us, one. 22, verse 22. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. He just kept on repeating this thing, that they be one, that they be one, as we are one, as we are one, that they be one, that they be one, as we are one. In verse 23, the same John 17, in verse 23, look at it. I am in them, and you are in me. <laughs> I don't know whether you are getting what I'm talking about. I am in them, and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Oh my God. So powerful. He was so concerned about their unity. He was so concerned about their unity. The unity of the church, the unity of his disciples. And he wants us to have that kind of unity that is between Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Unity.